Hey people, what you're looking at right here is the Ruger American Chambered and 22 Long Rifle. Is it the best uh, 22 on the market today? Is it better than other guns? Is it the best value for the price? I don't know. I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on it because I'm going to be comparing it to this. That right there, my friends, is the Marlin XT-22TR, also chambered in 22 long rifle. I put 150 rounds through each one of these earlier today, and uh, I thought I'd do a comparison video about what I thought about each one of them, if one's better than the other, uh, if one's a better value than the other, you know, the whole schmear. Stick around and uh, we'll talk about it. Hello fellow YouTubers, you got Mark here coming to you on the Garage Guy 879 channel. And this review is going to be a comparison video. Well, you can also uh, consider this uh, video to me asking a question. Is the Ruger American in 22 long rifle overrated? I don't know. It could be. But I think I found a really great rifle, you know, to rival it. In some ways, it may be better in some ways it may be not you're looking at the marlin xt 22 tr all right let's get down to brass tacks here all right the barrel length on the marlin 22 inches on the ruger this particular one it's either 21 or 22 it's right in that neighborhood somewhere i don't have the fact sheet with me or what have you but uh, it's pretty much about the same length as Marlin. The front sight on the Ruger is a fiber optic sight. And on the uh, Marlin, you just got your regular dot sight here. Let's try and take a look here. Fiber optic on the Ruger. And just your regular plain Jane dot sight on the front of the Marlin. Alrighty then. I'm going to be careful as I can moving this camera around. It's still on the tripod. Uh, the stock, as you can see, they're both made out of polymer. And uh, so you get scratches or dings or whatever. It ain't no big deal. These are not high dollar guns. And something in 22 long rifle. I don't think it should be high dollar guns unless you're some kind of... Uh, Fifth Avenue Collector, something like it, you know. One of them boys that just want something shiny and pretty to put in their gun cabinet. You know, then again, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the trigger on both of them, they are both Accu triggers. See if we can get a little uh, close up here on that. Right here on the Marlin. As you can see, I believe Savage come out with this. And on the Marlin. Pretty much look the same cosmetically. Now, okay, what do we have next? The capacity on these, the Marlin XT22TR sitting in the front right there, it can shoot long rifle, shorts, and longs. The capacity is 18 plus 1 long rifle, 25 plus 1 shorts, 19 plus 1 longs. Now, the Ruger here you got a couple of choices. 
It is not tube fed, it is magazine fed. Now it come from the factory, the Ruger American did, with the uh, 10 round, 1022 rotary magazine. It's a good little magazine, didn't have a bit of problem with it when I was out shooting earlier today. This right here, of course, the BMX-25 holds 25 rounds of long rifle. I had a little bit of problem with it. I think uh, part of it might be where it's brand new. I might need to, you know, take it apart, give it a good little cleaning. And uh, then again, some of it might have been the ammo because I was using a mixture of different ammos. And as everybody knows, 22 ammo can be rather dirty and jam easy. But I want to tell you this, today I had no problems with any jams or failures to feed on either one of these rifles. Now as far as me out shooting it earlier today, I've already got a video up on each rifle that shows me shooting each one. And me uh, posting more film on it would be just a waste of mine and your time. But... I went out today and did the actual comparisons. So, since I've already got footage up on YouTube, shooting each rifle, it's not necessary. Now, the action on both of these rifles is bold action. Alright, let's go ahead and give it a shake here. No problems whatsoever. Since they're both brand spanking new, they are going to be a little bit stiff. And uh, the extractors work just fine. Didn't have a bit of problem mechanically out of each rifle. Uh, but as far as bolt removal, they are both a little bit different. On the uh, Ruger, excuse me, on the Marlin, you do it like you normally do. You pull the trigger back, you hold it, the bolt will come out. Now, on the Ruger, it's a little bit different. Don't know if you can see that or not right there. There's a button right here. You push down and you just pull the bolt straight out. Easy to get to for cleaning. Very simple. Now, the cost. Let me get a little better angle back around here. Okay, these, uh, as you see them now, on each one, I have added a bipod and a scope. Of course, the uh, scope I added on each one, both are the same brand model scopes. A Bushnell 4x32 rifle scope made for 22 rimfire. Same exact thing on each rifle. And then I have the Blackhawk Sportster pivot bipod. 6 to 9 inch. And tell you what, a lot of people think, well, will that be enough for the BX-25 magazine on the Ruger American? Well, let's just get a shot of it right here. Well... Butterfingers. There you go. Plenty of room. No problem. You don't need a, what is it, 8 by 12 or 9 by 13 uh, bipod to put on it for that magazine. The uh, 6 by 9, it works just fine. See if I can get it loose here. 
push forward mark. Okay, you got to kind of overlook me. I've, this is my first experience with the uh, Ruger rifles as far as a BX-25. I keep wanting to pull that little tab back, but you're supposed to push it forward to disengage the magazine. All right, let's go over the uh, call strike from the dealership. Okay, the uh, Marlin XT-22 TR. 217 229 dollars tax and fees here in Virginia now you put on uh, 42 dollars for the scope 42 dollars for the bipod you add 84 dollars on a 229 that's 313 dollars still not a bad deal uh, the Ruger American 279 dollars with tax and fees, $298. Now, if you want to get the BX25 Magazine Extra, the cheapest place I found it was $29.95, $31 with tax and everything. That makes it $329. Now, of course, you add on the scope and bipod, each one $42 each. That makes it a grand total of uh, four hundred and thirteen dollars so what you're looking at right here is a one hundred dollar difference in favor of marlin now let's take a look at the shoulder stocks uh marlin comes pretty much as it is but that shoulder stock isn't really that low now i've got the uh ruger setting up on a box there for appearance purposes but uh, as far as putting a scope on it it's still easy to aim at and acquire a target so there's really no cheek piece needed now as everybody knows the Ruger American models come with an extra shoulder stock piece This one right here, you just use it for the iron sights, and if you want to replace it, the uh, back swivel hook, you just take it and turn it and loosen it, snap this off, you slide this one on right here, and you're good to go, and you got a good fit if you do want to put on a scope or some optics. As everybody knows, both rifles come with sling swivels, and... The iron sights on here, well, they weren't exactly accurate right out of the box. I did a lot of firing with both of them right out of the box. And uh, they were pretty close on, but I had to do a little bit of adjusting. But I don't have to worry about that problem right now because I had both scopes, Bushnell 4x32s, sighted dead on. So iron sights to me right now you know, is, isn't even a consideration. Now, the fit and finish on these guns, let's uh, talk a minute about that. Right here. The Marlin, as is the Ruger American, they both got polymer stocks. There was a little bit of stippling up here on the fore end of the uh, Marlin. And as you can see on each side, I've applied Glock tape or skaters tape, not the sandpaper kind, but the uh, rubbery kind. And a strip of that right there where I can get my thumb on it and the other side where I got these fingers right here. Turned out really well. Get a really good grip on it. Now back here, what they might want to call the pistol grip part or whatever. It's nice. I mean, I get my fingers and hand around here real good. I can get a real good grip on it. No problem. Right here, I don't need any Glock tape. It is stipled a little bit. Still a little slick feeling. But uh, I don't need to add anything onto that. Now, this is one part the Ruger does win out on. Right here, the uh, grip part. It's a little bit thinner right in there. Really nice. 
and you can feel where it's texture right there a lot better. And as you can see, the forend is grooved right here. You can get your thumb right up there, your fingers right here, put them whichever way you want them. It's almost like putting your uh, fingers on a uh, really good guitar neck for you pickers out there. It's really nice. Now the safeties on these are different also. The safety on the uh, Marlin, right here, back for safe, forward for fire. Still very easy to get to. Pretty natural. And you have the Tang safety on the Ruger American. Back for safe, forward for fire, just like a Mossberg 500 shotgun. You gotta love these Tang safeties, but then again, what man doesn't love a little Tang now and again? <laughs> if anybody says no to that, there's something bad wrong there. As far as cleaning each firearm, there's like two bolts to remove. You remove the barrel, you remove the trigger assembly, and you're good to go. You can't get much more simpler than that. If uh, you can't understand it from the instruction booklet, get here on YouTube. There are plenty of videos showing how to assemble, disassemble, reassemble, whatever. Plenty of cleaning videos. It's no big deal. All right, right now we're going to talk about the uh, trigger action and bolt action on here. Now, let's take a look at the Marlin XT22TR right quick. Just like that. Now let's bring down the Ruger American 22. Okay, I got the safety on. Let's do that again. Both of these rifles damn near have hair triggers. Now they're both adjustable. And I have touched neither trigger since I got them. They are on a well, where they've been set at the factory. Now let's talk about the bolt action. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, when I got each rifle home, I removed the bolt from each rifle. I cleaned them off. I frog glued them really well, put a little bit of oil on them. I also run a patch through the barrels, make sure there was no shavings or filings or whatever from the factory they were both cleaned up and good to go now i'm just going to tell you this right now i do not see a bit of difference in either rifle as far as the trigger or the bolt action the ruger at first the bolt action was a little bit smoother to begin with, but after I fired a few rounds through the Marlin, it was equally smooth, right on par. You know, I, I just got to be honest with you about that. Also, let's get to uh, the accuracy. Before I put the scopes on each one of them, when I took them out of the box, they were both shooting just a tad bit to the left. You know, nothing major. If uh, you're shooting at a rabbit or something like that, you might miss. But uh, after I got the scopes on them, they are both equally dead on. And here we are getting to the last part. Magazine fed versus tube fed well it just depends on 
which purpose you want to use it for. You know, that's just my opinion. Uh, some people prefer the magazines. You run out of some shells out of the uh, Ruger American. You can always get one of these BX-25s. Have 20 more, 25 more rounds ready to go. Or you can buy a bunch of these 10-round rotary magazines, which are really good, and keep going from there. But, you're not going to be able to shoot the shorts or the longs out of it. Now, if you just want to shoot a long rifle out of it, that's fine. The Marlin XT-22 TR, it is tube fed. As you can see right here. And earlier in the video, I told you the capacity of it. You can shoot all three varieties of 22 ammo through it, no problem. And tube fed versus magazine fed, to me that is personal preference, alright? I can't see one being any better than the other except, oh you might have to slow down, it'll take more time to load 18 rounds of long rifle into the Marlin than it does to slap in 25 rounds into the uh, Ruger. But now they got these things called speedy loaders and uh, I think you can hold up to like 120 rounds in each one of them. So to me, that kind of puts the uh, tube fed up and over the magazine fed just a little bit. Where uh, you buy the uh, BX25 mags, 25 rounds, Cheapest I saw them, like I said, was $29.95, and they go on up from there. Or you can go to Amazon or eBay or the Henry Repeating Arms website and get a speedy loader for a tube fed magazine for like $22 bucks plus shipping. You get two of those, that's 240 rounds. How much money are you going to spend on a magazine to hold more rounds on the Ruger. I'm going to come back with my final verdict here in just a second. Well, people, my final verdict is in. I went over all the pros, and there's not really any cons on each one of these rifles here. They're both really good rifles. Like any new firearm, you have a break-in period. But as for me, like I said, it boiled down to magazine fed versus tube fed. The Ruger American, it's a really great firearm. It's got a lot of potential. But this Marlin XT-22TR, it's underrated. The Ruger American, it's not overrated. It's everything people says it is. But to Marlin, it's underrated. And as far as uh, value goes, price or whatever, of course I know they say you get what you pay for. That always happens. But in this case, if I got $400 to spend, I'm going to buy the Marlin XT22TR. I'm going to put the scope on it, and I'm going to put the tripod on it, and I'm going to get a couple of speedy loaders. It's just a tad bit more economical, alright? And Marlin has been around for years. I know people say, yeah, Remington's bought them out. Anything that comes out of that Kentucky plant is going to be crap. It's not always true. There's always adjustments and things you can do yourself. But right now, I love both of these rifles. I have no problem with each one of them. I put all kinds of different brands of ammo through them. Even those wax covered uh, rounds. No jams, no failures to feed, no failures to eject, no stove pipes, whatever you want to call them. Both rifles performed equally well, but 
I got to go with the Marlin right here. Like I said, give me 400 bucks. Give me a choice. I'm going with the Marlin. Now, I'm not saying that to badmouth the Ruger American, but in a pinch, you got to go with what works. Now, I'm not in a pinch. This is my opinions and my thoughts. If you disagree, please leave me some comments and tell me why. You know, maybe you'll have a good argument. Maybe I'll see things in a different light. But this is from my own personal experience. Like I said, both are great guns. I enjoy shooting them both. But the Marlin XT-22 TR is just a little bit better value. Well, listen, I've rambled on long enough. This is Mark here coming to you on the Garage K879 channel. I'm going to get off here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you agree with me, you know, click like. If you don't, click dislike or leave a comment and tell me why. Maybe there's something I overlooked. This is the best way to learn about things. But most importantly, when you go shooting, be safe.